Are you ready? With, with the important stuff, okay? So uh, my, my big question for you, just to get the ball rolling, is uh, how, how, how was breakfast? <laughs> it was really great, actually. I had some um, leftover lobster mac and cheese from last night. <laughs> well, funny enough, um, yeah, I, li I like a good soft boiled egg, as you do. And you Americans seem to have some weird aversion to egg cups. I couldn't find yeah. a friggin' egg cup. What's the deal it's with really that? It's really hard to find So them. I had to make one out of the little pot of jam, <laughs> um, which you will see on my Instagram account later because I'm very proud of myself. So it's really maybe, maybe the smartest thing I've ever done <laughs> in my miserable life. That's, that's, yeah, that's like, I would say that's probably top five. Uh, you I, do I, have egg cups here, don't genius. you? Genius. I'm not going crazy. You do have egg cups, right? Yeah. Okay, maybe. What do you, a hard boiled egg. How do you eat boiled common. eggs? <laughs> You're animals. <laughs> Peel them and just eat them. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> but what if, it's, what if it's soft? It's going to go over your hand. I'm so perplexed. <laughs> anyway. Well, then you can't, there's nothing to hold to dip the little bits yeah. of toast How do you into. Put your That's the best part of it. Cobb salad. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like depression on a plate. <laughs> America's a weird country. Like you said you had lobster mac and cheese. Like I can't oh. think of anything that is more simultaneously decadent and depressing. It's At just the this, same time. Yeah. I know. Exactly. It's just it's it's just this wonderful juxtaposition of like conflicting like ideologies. It's 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 bad. It kinda of, it got depressing, depressing. I mean it had been sitting out all night as well. <laughs> it was a little dodgy, but it was worth it. Yeah. Worth it. Totally worth it. Fantastic. Wow. So you guys ready to answer some questions? Yeah, sure. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. 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 <coughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. Hi. Hey there, my name is hey. Jay. Hey. And Jay. Um, my question is for Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I said that right. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did you know, like, when you were doing your character, because your character really only ever said just one thing, how did you know what emotions to convey? Was it in the script or did you just Pure kind talent. of wing it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, it did, it said it in the script. They would put like a weird sort of description, like how they would want me to be in the scene. It would be like, um, yeah, it would just be in brackets. It would be like Hodor is, um, he's upset in this, in this scene. Or, it was really easy to sort of read for myself. And I have to say, I didn't always agree with what they said. And they usually would go with what I said. Because, you know, I'm Hodor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No more swearing, I promise. <laughs> I am Irish, but I'll do my best. <laughs> so, I apologize, children. So, yeah, it, it was sort of mapped out for me, but sometimes it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. That actually brings, because I know that with, uh, like, R2-D2 in Star Wars and Kenny in South Park, like, they actually would script the dialogue, and then yeah. in Star Wars it became... Did, you ever, did that ever happen for... Of the Game of Thrones scripts, or was it always just that parenthetical? You mean you think I just did it randomly? Like, when just like threw in a few Hodors here and there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the exact amount of Hodors, really. There'd be, like, be like three, four, eleven, you know. It was exactly scripted. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I wasn't sure how they were going to do it at the start either, but that's how they did it. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Kalena. Hi. Very nice to meet you. Um, I was wondering if you guys can have a beer with any Game of Thrones character, who would it be and why? Hmm. <laughs> I'm letting you talk. Oh. If I could have a beer with any Game of Thrones character. That's a good question. I've never really thought about that. <laughs> and I, like people that I, have, that I wouldn't have necessarily met. Like so, my character wouldn't have met. Or someone who'd be fun to have a beer with. Yeah, I, th I, think, be I think the Hound would be fun the to have a beer with. The Hound would be fun to have a beer with. Yeah, I think he would be fun to, you know, have yeah. a beer with. And there's a few people that you wouldn't want to... Ewan. You wouldn't want to... Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, Ewan yeah. in real life is really Ewan nice, but his character... Ewan in real life is really fun to have a beer with. Yeah, Ramsey know. Bolton would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it depends, <laughs> it depends on what, what point of the night. Maybe the starting, but you want to get out of there pretty... You know, you want to get out of there before he's too drunk. Yeah. It can get really weird. And like season seven, Bran is kind of, oh my god, <laughs> exactly. like, kinda turned into like an emo sponge. And then there's some people, you know, it'd be nice to, it'd be nice to see like Sansa like have a few beers and loosen I'd up like a bit. I'd like to have beer with Sansa. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you guys.
Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys. Hey. Got a two-part question for Christian. Who would Hodor put on the throne, and how would it inevitably go horribly wrong? <laughs> so the first question was, who would Hodor put on the throne? Yes. And what was the second part? How would it inevitably go horribly <laughs> wrong? Inevitably go wrong. Okay. Well, I know that Hodor probably has. I'm answering this quickly because I've answered this question before. I think Hodor would probably have a crush on Brienne um, because they would like to make sort of giant babies together. And <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'd put her on the throne, but I think it would actually go quite well. I think <laughs> That's it would yeah, go it well. Would work, yeah. But I mean, she's probably going to be killed. Yeah. Someone will kill her. One of the um, few good ones that can't Podrick, last. Podrick, being her best friend in the world, will probably <laughs> her in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> you know, because uh, it's Game of Thrones. Let's face it. So that's probably how it would go wrong. Thank you. You're welcome. I have two questions for Christian. Okay. First is, would you like to come back on Game of Thrones mm -hmm. as a White Walker? Would I like to come back to Game of Thrones as a White Walker? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course I would. I mean, that would be so fun. So much fun. I, I'd love to kill Bran. <laughs> 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 Don't get me wrong, this is two horrible things I've said about Isaac, but I love Isaac. Isaac's like, <laughs> he's one of my best friends, but I'd still love to kill him. <laughs> so, I just think that would be like poetic justice. <laughs> Second one is, how did it feel when you got the part of Hodor? How did it feel? Um, I mean, I didn't really get how big, how big Game of Thrones was going to be. Um, I came home to my mother and I said to her, um, I've just did this really weird audition where I had to say this one word <laughs> over and over. <laughs> and I told her the word and she was like, Hodor? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, is, that, is it Game of Thrones? And I was like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and she said, oh my God, I've read those books and they're absolutely incredible. Mum's a really big sort of David Gamble, um, all these mad science fiction writers, she loves them. Um, and she, basically that was our dinner conversation for the next five years, that's why I didn't have to, I didn't have to read the books, you know. <laughs> I, I just asked her what happened. And um, that made me excited. She was like, it's gonna be really good, this is probably the, one of the best series of books that have ever been written. And yeah, it, it was immensely exciting. I never knew how much it would change my life. I didn't think I'd be sitting on stage seven years later nearly in Sacramento, California. You know, it's, it's absolutely nuts. Thank you. Hi. Hey, I'd like to know if your characters had a reality TV show, what would it be about? <laughs> what was it? A, a reality TV show. Oh. The Sand Snakes have some like weird Dornish Kardashian show. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the three of them. <laughs> I think I'd do the... Fighting the, for the top spot constantly. I thought you'd do the Bake Off. <laughs> bake Off with, with, people, with the people's body part. And yeah. A roast, uh, roast off. <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I would do the Bake Off. I mean, any, any chance to eat pies. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would do that. You like cooking. I love cooking. Yeah. Little known fact, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fun facts about us. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I got a quick question. Um, when you guys got your scripts and you found out that you were gonna die, uh, how did you take that? Like, did you like the way you died? Did you feel good about it? Or was it like, a, oh, did I? Did you... Spoiler alert, I guess, by the way, for this question. Oh, come on, they know. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, if anyone that If you that don't know, just here... get out. You, know, you, should know, you should know by now. Seriously, guys. I think, I mean, I... I uh, got a phone call before I got the scripts, and it's like, and I think definitely like as the as it's the seasons got on progressively, I feel like you got less and less material. It got more and more secretive, um, and so there was like a. I knew I already knew because I was away on holiday, and um, one of my sisters had already been told who had told me so. It was more the having to act surprised to <laughs> the showrunners, like, you know, like I was like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, I never saw that coming, but um, I, I knew. But yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was, they promised me a really gnarly and gory death and they delivered for sure. <laughs> I had to do the same, I had to act surprised. Yeah. Um, uh, Finn Jones, I called him and I asked, did I make it to the end of the script? And he just was like, no. 
But I was super stoked. Uh, I was, it answered so many questions for my character. And, you know, I didn't know anything about the, the, the history and, uh, of, of Hodor. It just it tied it into a really nice um, circle. So I loved it. I, I, I loved the way I died, <laughs> strangely. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks. Oh, this question is for both of you. Um, what did you think about Peter Dinklage and the other American actors' English accents, <laughs> being of actual English descent? I mean, it's funny, you know, it's funny. The accents, the accents on the show are interesting because they're not from anywhere. They can, you know. That's true. You know, so they're. That's, it's from Westeros, not yeah, from England. Yeah, it's not, it's you know, kind of so thing is that, <laughs> So, you know, maybe if you were to put them anywhere else. I mean, I know for, you know, for us in Dawn, it was interesting because Pedro Pascal had set the accent uh, for the world of Dawn. Yeah. It was season. a little bit Spanish. No, yeah, yeah exactly. And he yeah. kind of just like made it up. And I mean, honestly, like, however Pedro Pascal speaks is brilliant, you know? So it's just. And then we came in and followed suit, and it was really interesting because we all from. I'm from New Zealand, and Jess is English, and Rosie's Italian. And so we had to kind of find some middle ground <laughs> that worked. But the great thing is, the, is that you have. I mean, no one else has been to Dawn except for us. So. Right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like, yeah, this is how we speak. <laughs> you kind of had free reign. Yeah, free reign. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I think Peter did a great job. Yeah. Um, I definitely improved as the seasons. Um, I think RP English is especially for American. I think it's probably one of the hardest accents. Mm -hmm. I honestly um, think he did a really good job. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I mean, he won an Emmy for God's sake. He's, you know, yeah. it can't be bad. Someone thinks he's doing great. I mean, I think one of the most talented. Um, accent actors in is Conneth Hill. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. oh, I mean, he is yeah. he, he has the same accent as I do, oh, wow. and he is untraceable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't even know. I, I met him and I was like, well, How would you know that he's not English, right? I know he's, yeah, he's not English at all. He's, he's totally full Irish. <laughs> fully, oh. so. And he's got an, an insanely incredible head of hair. Yeah, <laughs> and I it know. grows I, 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 like it grows so quickly. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, yeah, I was the same I didn't thing. Like, him, I didn't recognize, recognize him at all. The first time I saw him, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was completely freaked me out. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Um, I have a question for the both of you. Uh, but first of all, thank you guys for your amazing work on Game of Thrones. Oh, thank there you. were thank definitely you. tears at both of your deaths. Oh. Um, but my question is what character on Game of Thrones would you want a scene with and why? Would we want to see when? Like, have a scene with? I have a scene with? I mean, it's... There's lots of characters that I'd like to have scenes with just for selfish reasons, you know? Like, I'd love, like, for Obara and Hodor to hang out because I love Christian so much. So, <laughs> like, I'd love to get paid to hang out with my friend, you know, at yeah, work, awesome. you know? So, so there's, you know, there's lots of, I, you know... But I think they would make a nice little match and hang out. Yeah, we should do, like, a, like an off... Or we can do, like, them? a little, yeah, a, a spin-off show. Oh, you know? please do. Obara? <laughs> Exactly, Obara. Obara sounds. Obara, she goes. Obara. Yeah, Sorry. you know, so for, the, for those reasons, it'd be, you know, there's lots of characters where it's like it'd be really fun to see. I always sort of be, it would have been great for the Sand Snakes to somehow come across Arya because. Oh, yeah. You know, that she's. Would be awesome. Yeah, I think she might be the only other person that they'd meet where they might. Have a bit of respect for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's so compartmentalized um, mm -hmm. how the show is filmed, and you don't really get to see anybody. No, exactly, you, you, yeah. Uh, Unless you cross over and happen to be shooting at the same time. You know, it's yeah. like, where, you know, it's very much like the show where everyone's in their own little worlds and you can totally just, you know, end cut up it off. Yeah, be cut, being cut off with you know, the people that you work with and your kind of storylines. But being a new actor onto the scene, I learned a lot from the veteran actors there. Um, mm -hmm. It was incredible, uh, like Ron Donaghy. And, oh yeah, for yeah, sure. That, that was unbelievable. And really, I would have liked to work with Charles Dance. I, I never got to work with him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I thought he was incredible in the show. And also, um, Olena. Uh, oh yeah, we got to do, we got to work with yeah, that's um, great. Dame Diana Rigg, which was like, in my entire career, one of the luckiest days of my life. Yeah. You know, to be in the presence of someone who has that much experience yeah. and, you know, and it's just, she's been around and she's seen it all and the way that she works and runs a set is 
we we were all kind she of done. We were, yeah. yeah, like we yeah. She she's very commanding presence, and we all in that moment very much felt like small Little children. children. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, I remember I, I saw her on her first read through. I was at a read through with her for uh -huh, the first yeah. season, and I heard the first words she said. She 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 said as Olana, and um, everyone was just silent. Yeah, you can't. Um, <laughs> I was like watching the teacher read a book. No, exactly. She's so she's so brilliant. We, she, funny, we ended up flying in somewhere at the same time, and we had an hour car ride to get to where we were filming, and it was the three of you know the three of us and Rosie, Jess, and I, and we just sat in the car, and after about half an hour, she went, "Well, you three are pretty bloody quiet. You're not going <laughs> to say anything." <laughs> you're all scared. Yeah, we're all scared. <laughs> Thank you all so much. You're both such adorable human beings. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hello there. Good. Um, this question is for Keisha. Uh -huh. So, oh, thank you. Uh, quick question. Um, someone had answered you. Someone had asked my question, but I'm just going to change it up a little bit. Um, so, the stand stakes are very powerful women, and given time, if they had anticipated it, do you think they would have been able to defeat Euron's fleet? Well, do we think, sorry? Do you think you would have been able to defeat Euron or his fleet at, to some level? Uh, if time, yeah, if they had been prepared, if they hadn't been just on the ship drinking in hammocks, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, possibly. I mean, you know, that's the thing is that they are warriors and it's what they're trained to do. And, you know, it's, that's all they really know and that's where their greatest strength lies. So for sure, any time that they're... I mean, they're in some ways always prepared to go into battle, but if they n knew that the attack was coming, they definitely probably would have had a great chance, I think. I mean, there's also, I mean, that character of Euron Greyjoy is like, I think Pilo does like an incredible job. Mm. It's working with him and, you know, like fighting with him is terrifying. It's really, really, because it's, it's like, you know, I thought that Obara was a psychopath, but that character is... It's like they, he smells blood and loves it. <laughs> you know? It's just like it is like a whole other thing, you know. And so, and he's on a mission to kind of. So it's hard when you, you know, a skilled fighter, you know, as the character. I think when you're dealing with that kind of level of people wanting to kill, um, I think you know that's what he was going to do it by any means necessary. And any any anyone, and it's not. It wasn't at any. It was anyone. They just happened to be in his way. So. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I'd like to know who you think should sit the Iron Throne. I, get, I feel like I change my answer yeah, every I mean, day. Yeah, we do change it up, but I always stick with Brienne because yeah. um, I just think that because of all the, the wars and trouble and BS, basically, that um, Westeros has been through, I think they need a, need a leader that doesn't really want the throne. Um, probably someone who just feels like they should do it out of duty. And I think she would do that. I think she would make fair decisions. Um, so I think it deserves someone to get It's not going to happen. You know, it's not going to... No, nothing yeah, I'm, fair is ever going to happen in Westeros. It's never... So. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really intrigued to see mm. where it goes. I mean, I have no idea anymore. I used to have a much... I used to, you know, you have much more kind of theories which I could back up and make sense, but now... Yeah, it's anybody's know. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hey. It's so awesome Hi. to be in front of you guys. So, uh, as for Keisha, uh, since you use a spear in the, uh, the show, mm -hmm. like, did you have any kind of like martial arts background, or did they train you on the spot? What's up with that? Like, uh, I didn't have any martial arts background beforehand. Um, I'd done a lot of work uh, with. Um, Maori weapon called a tayaha, which is like a similar spear, but um, it's, you know, and it's a similar body movement. So when I went into this role, uh, I started and did like a lot of training in wushu. Oh, well then. Um, which was, and, you know, like physically this was definitely the most like demanding role I've ever had. I don't necessarily before this get picked to do big strong characters. <laughs> so um, so I was I was really I welcomed the challenge but it was definitely a lot of hard work. Did you take the spear when you like died and all that? No, I wasn't allowed there was it was funny, I remember I tried to um, take Did it like <laughs> take it from Belfast, you know, 
it's really hard apparently to get an eight foot spear on a plane. <laughs> yeah, there's so, some rules about yeah, there, that. there's all these weird rules. Yes. The T TSA are so uptight about it. I was like, it's my spear, right. man. Like, come on. But they wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't let me carry it on the plane for some reason. So. <laughs> Thank you. Did you guys keep any mementos from your time on the show? Yeah, that I'm not allowed to have. <laughs> <laughs> I kept, a little, I kept a little piece of the door. Um, I broke it off. I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did, I had to, you I had to, yeah. You absolutely deserved it, you know, exactly. <laughs> but the funny thing was, there was actually like seven doors, believe it or not, there was like stunt doors. <laughs> there were probably more, yeah, more stunt was, doors than there were stunt doubles. Like that, that scene was filmed on like four different locations. It looks like all just one, one shot, but four different locations, three different caves, inside, outside, daytime, <laughs> nighttime. Four different doors, close-ups, different cameras, different ho doors actually even once one shot. So yeah, absolutely crazy. Wow. Hey. Hello. Hi, I'm Ron. Um, first, uh, thank you both for coming. Kristen, thank you for coming out. I think it's important that we have a broader context of what LGBT people are like. Yeah. And, and I totally uh, you're an inspiration to me. My yeah. question is, um, <clears throat> At what point did you find out you were holding the door? That's why you were saying ho door. And yeah. what was your first feeling like about the fact that you were saying ho door because of the holding the door? I mean, it was completely against what I, what I believed what ho door was. I mean, I thought it was his name. I, I, I really did. I, had, I went with the, the theory that he was one of the Clegane brothers, maybe, perhaps. They're like ho door, Sandor, Gregor. They're mm -hmm. all like seven foot tall. You know, there's definitely some sort of tie in there, but completely wrong. And I did ask maybe seven or eight times George, and he was just like, nope, I'm not telling you. Um, I even tried to get him drunk. I know, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's impossible to get anything yeah, out of. Yeah, he's stone faced. It's, yeah, it's quite the the cool. only information I was, this is so embarrassing, the only information I was ever able to get out of David and Dan was um, <laughs> I asked, actually, I don't know which one's which. I don't really care either. <laughs> um, I just call him David or Dan. <laughs> you know what I'm just, David, I'm Dan. Hi, David, I'm Dan. Even when it's just <laughs> They're one. They're always of them. together anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it was at the urinal. <laughs> I was washing my hands and I was kind of like, hi. Um, so I asked him what he had his <laughs> out. I'm not, that, that, seemed, that seemed to work. <laughs> <laughs> I got the information. You know. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Awkward. <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm aware that there's a lot of special effects, like a lot of special effects that go into the show. Um, what is it like for, especially your guys' death, you know, um, to film that without knowing what the finished product is going to look like? It's... That is weird, actually. Yeah, it is yeah. weird. I mean, they have like a lot of, um, you know, the dep they have a bunch of stuff like often set up. I know when I was shooting our final like battle scene on the ship, they had like a bunch of previs that our director, Mark Mylod, was able to show us to get like a great understanding of like how big the attack, you know, it was that you know, and how and because. But then at the same time, the sets are really incredible and they have the resources that things that, you know, previously or on another show might have to be a fix, they actually have practical. And so yeah. there's like the really cool thing when Euron comes in and the sh you know, his ship, like the core from his ship comes down and like grabs that, like that was a practical thing. And so it literally would cut like a big crane that came down and like smashed the deck yeah. of the ship. Um, you know, so it's quite... So we're lucky in some ways because you get to really feel and like be a part of the world. But there were some ridiculous things as well. I, mean, I remember for the dire wolves, um, only in season one and some of season two were the real dogs used. Um, and <laughs> we used to have to pretend there'd be like two assistant producers or directors and they'd be inside this like green sack, like an amoeba. <laughs> And they'd be like galloping around the field. And we had to pretend it was a <laughs> and, Yeah. And, you know, it was a, or a tennis ball on a stick. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but, I mean, for the, the scene, my death scene, for example, it was a lot of practical effects mm -hmm. as well. Um, it was all real. Um, it was all, they built an entire cave system, like inside a, inside a studio. And it was just unbelievable. It really was. It, it felt so real. Mm -hmm. um, but I also remember that 
and when I was banging against that door, the whole set moved. <laughs> like it, was a, it, was, it was something forward. They had to get 11 people behind the door to stop me going through, <laughs> including someone who was the same size as me. So I was like, I was totally breaking the set. But that was fun. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um, so one of my favorite parts of the show are always the like behind the scenes and behind the episodes. So what was it like going to all these crazy locations to film? Like, I mean, you see like some of this stuff is ridiculous, especially like beyond mm -hmm. the wall. Like, what was it like? Well, I'm immensely proud to say that all my stuff was in my home country of Northern Ireland. Um, and even the snowy scenes that we did um, beyond the wall, that was just like 10 miles outside <laughs> Belfast um, with false snow. We never got to go to Iceland or anything. So, um, yeah, it really sort of turned a spotlight onto my home country. And we, we do all these Game of Thrones tours, which I'm not invested in, by the way. Um, I get, don't get commission. Um, but yeah, it sort of turned a spotlight on the landscape of, of Northern Ireland. It's really beautiful. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we were really lucky because we got to come in and then shoot in the south of Spain for mm. dawn, which was pretty dreamy. <laughs> and so, you know, a, a lot of the guys who have been at the wall for like five seasons were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, like, we've been like stuck here with like false snow and then you get to just yeah. like, we're like, oh, we're going to go to like film in the Alcazar for 10 days and they never shut it down, but they're going to shut it down for the show. But I was like, well, those are just the benefits of, from being from a prettier place, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. All right, what's happening? Now, this question I've got is for Christian. Okay. And don't worry, Keisha, I know you're here, so I recognize you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, but I appreciate this question, that. What about me? <laughs> but this question, this question is very, <laughs> very important. It goes back from, towards season one to six. Yep. How strong was Hodor's bond with Bran Stark? Um, well, speaking from my own, my own bond with Isaac, um, I always hoped that came across. Um, he definitely loved Isaac, and he definitely loved Bran. He felt very protective of him. Um, and I think that was sort of, he made the final sacrifice for him in season six. Um, yeah, I think he, he felt him like a little brother. Mm -hmm. And because he was safe in, in um, Winterfell, um, I think when they traveled together, that was like he felt that Bram was like a little piece of home, a sort of like a little friend. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, if your characters were in a musical, what musical would it be? <laughs> hmm. That's a good one. Um, it's really good. Boots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be thinking about that. would be brilliant. <laughs> I totally would be. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. I want to give a good answer to this one. <laughs> I think he would do a good Evita. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it'd be a good Eva a Peron. Good, yeah, exactly. I can see that. <laughs> I just really, um, that's a great question. Yeah, I want to give a good answer, but we're terrible. I know. So. <laughs> That's what happens. You guys give us good ones, good questions. Yeah, I'm an Andrew Lloyd Webber. I love Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals. I'm, I'm really into his stuff. Um, so I'm trying to sort of equate that, but it's not really working, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to see, it'd be interesting to see if they ever go down the path of a Game of Thrones musical. Oh, God. You know, really? is there one? There isn't a Game of Thrones musical yet. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Thrones. Is it? I will find out the name of it for you, and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to check it, that out. Yeah. For sure. I still haven't got an answer, though. <laughs> God, that is, a, that is a toughie. I know. I don't I mean, Phantom of the Opera? It's too dark. I mean, it's okay, don't, don't ask why. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, there. Right. That's my favorite Thank musical, you. so there you go. That's a, that's a question you could ask. I What's your favorite musical? I kind of want to see the entirety of Game of Thrones kind of readapted into kind of something West Side Story. -ish. I was going to say, it feels like West yeah. Side Story. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, that would work. Hi. 
Hey, uh, if you guys were able to bring anything from Westeros into the real life, what would it be and why? Dragons. Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Thank we you. We could for really that. use some dragons. <laughs> Hello. So I don't know if you guys heard about the theory of the Klingon Bowl. Klingon Bowl. So who do you think would win, the Hound or the Mountain, if they were to fight in the next season? The Hound or the Mountain? I want the Hound to win. I want the Hound to win for sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I... That b killed my Mountain killed my father. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Way to get the character, Keisha. <laughs> Hello. Calm down. Hello. Hi. Um, so first of all, I think I should say this is kind of like a spoiler, so just warning for anyone. But uh, I was wondering what you guys felt about one of Daenerys' dragons dying, and what do you think will become of it um, other than what we just saw in the last episode? I thought it was awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was on the edge of my seat when he was walking towards um, Viserion's corpse. And I just, I, I sort of knew what was going to happen, but when the eye opened and it was blue, I just lost my shit, really. Yeah, it's um, pretty, yeah, it's to be honest, incredible. I'm very excited to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to say, actually, I mean, I'm a big fan of art, of, of, of like, that's a genre of TV and movies. I think they are the best rendered dragons I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah they incredible. just look so real. I mean, I don't know what a real dragon looks like, but I mean. Oh, you haven't? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't, you didn't get a, you didn't get that dragon egg no, um, gift. No. Oh. Yeah, I remember oh, like looking at that dragon egg. And... <laughs> I get nothing. No, yeah, no. I think that it's incredible, and I think yeah. you know, just as from a viewer's perspective, I feel like we we've been owed you know dragons for a while. Yeah. We've been you know <laughs> waiting for them, and we're finally like they're finally you know. It's we're like finally dragons in them. the face. Yeah. And that's exactly. Yeah. There's everyone, a lot. We all want know? that though. Which is like, which is totally what I want. Yeah. I love okay. them. Thanks. First of all, I want to thank the both of you and all your cast and crew, your fellow Ooh. co-workers, for my wig fell off there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> God, I look like Lex Luthor. It ran off um, my there. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you, all your cast and crew, your fellow actors and actresses, for what you've been giving us for these last three years. Thank you. And uh, my question is, uh, now kind of along a similar line of a previous question, uh, if you guys could take the Game of Thrones characters and create a sitcom out of them, what would it be? Like something along the lines of Seinfeld or Drew Carey show, what would you guys do? Modern Family, it's like a... It's just, <laughs> it's just, well, I think, my, I think that's the thing is about the show, is like, you know, regardless of the genre, like I've always thought the reason that we can all like relate to it is because it really is stories about families and you know that's the thing is and that's something we all understand and dysfunctional families you know and it's i mean to the extreme in a lot of cases in these families but very much so and then and the links that people will go to for the people that they love and so yeah it doesn't sound like a very funny sitcom i know it's like, <laughs> i'm gonna make this really hard for the show. <laughs> like, i would go I for i would go for cheers that'd um, be great where like Hodor was Norm, and he walks into the bar, and everyone goes Hodor. <laughs> so he holds the door open for everyone too. <laughs> Pardon? He would hold the door open for anyone who comes oh, to the bar. Oh gosh! Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi. 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 I am so excited to meet you guys. This oh. is amazing for me right now, <laughs> and I'm a little bit nervous. Don't be nervous. My name is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> So, I wanted to ask, like, what is your most memorable time being on the show? Like, whether you were on set or were you not on set, like, what was your most memorable time? Uh, for me, by far, it was the, my first day on set. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, I was such a big fan of the show, and I'd read the, all the books, and, um, and so that feeling, like, comp you know, never compared. It was, it was so exciting, and, uh, you know, you're in these costumes that are just... You know, they're incredible and unlike anything else and on these giant sets and we had horses and snakes and scorpions <laughs> on our first day and weapons and it's, yeah, it was, it really felt like, you know, winning the golden ticket, nice. for sure. Uh, on my second, second day, the, the, I think one of the first scenes I filmed was um, when the Lannisters arrived in Winterfell mm -hmm. for the first time with the big carriage and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was really one of the only times a lot of those families were together in the show. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm just the same as you. To see the size of the production, everyone in their armor, mm -hmm. and all the horses, and I just went, wow, this is just such a huge production. And it was it was totally mind boggling. It also, was really nice to see everyone together for one of the only times. <laughs> yeah, it never happened again. Um, <laughs> Everyone killed each other. Well, every time it happens, <laughs> yeah, they, they, it doesn't end very well. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> like, so. Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you very Thanks. much. Hello. Hello. I wanted to know, what is it like to have to do your, your accents on the show? And also, have you ever had to do an American accent? I mostly only work in an American accent. Um, mm. So it was actually really nice to have to do something different uh, and you know yeah so it was it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun I mean they have really cool really great top-of-the-line dialect coaches as well that I worked with so um, yeah I, I really love working with all different kinds of dialects and accents so I really enjoy it but most of the things I've been working on recently have been um, using an Irish accent or like a starky sort of accent sort of mid mid England sort of accent but um, a lot of things I auditioned for in American accents um, definitely not perfect I'm still working on it but yeah I mean for a Northern Irish person we already say our R's like a, an American so it's pretty there are things that are similar mm -hmm. so I find it quite easy actually Thank you don't so make much. me do it thanks <laughs> I've, I'm, I've always wanted to do that I'm from Chicago I'm not from <laughs> <laughs> I, every time I watch Game of Thrones, it just comes out and it, it takes like two hours for it to go away. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi there. Hi. I feel like this mic is useless. Um, I wanted to know more about the fighting choreography, especially in the final fight scene on the ship. Was there mm -hmm. fire everywhere? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the, the stunt teams are nonstop like choreographing fight scenes for everybody, you know, and it's trying to find the time with all the actors and this, you know, time within the shooting schedule to kind of perfect that. And so they kind of set the choreography and then you go away and practice as much as you need to, um, which is never quite enough because, you know, once you get there on the day, especially, you know, that final stuff on the ship, you know, you don't really have an opportunity to try it, like, and, you know, there's all these elements, and so regardless of how well you know it, it's like they set the ship on fire, and then they flooded it with water, and it's the middle of the night, and it's freezing cold, and then they add a hundred people around you. So. It's serious stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really full on. It feels, it definitely felt, like, very real at mm. moments, you know, and, and there's not a lot, of, it's, the other thing is, like, the sound, like it's like when you have those battle scenes, it's so loud. And so there's not, you know, even if you miss something, you have to like be able to keep going or like get out of the way because yeah. there's not really a lot of room to kind of scream out stop. Yeah, and you have to, yeah. you have to learn how to stay in character as well when the mm -hmm. explosions and stuff go off because it really shakes you out of character sometimes. Yeah, so it's like scary. A massive explosion, you want to go, whoa! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's terrible, yeah. but um, it's... It helps you. It's very real, as very Keisha says. Real. You know? yeah. And one of the most fun things is if you if you hit a stuntman with a with a hammer, it's their fault. You know, <laughs> you can go you can go fully at them, and if you hit them in the face, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And it, well, but they actually apologise to you. I was like, yeah. oh, wow, okay, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to know what color would you like to dye your hair and why. It what color? Any, it could be anything. Oh, I always had my hair blue when I was. Um, mm -hmm. My hair has been every color under the sun. Um, I was completely dyed before Game of Thrones, but they made me change it back to gray. Yeah. Um, so yeah, blue. I always have blue hair. Yeah, I've had I've had a lot of a lot of colors. Um, so. I mean, yeah, I like blue. I've been thinking lately about maybe dyeing it purple again for a little mm. while. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Thank do you. It. <laughs> exactly. Totally do it. I, I might do it today. It. Yeah. Hi. Um, okay. I wanted to ask, how did you guys react when you saw your final death scene, like the finished product, like when you got ripped apart by White Walkers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's funny, like I was saying before, like it's funny because you, they stopped giving like full scripts and they had to get really kind of, they had to put a lot of security measures in place, especially once they'd surpassed the books. And, um, and so they actually had like a little library kind of 
in, on the production office in Belfast. So the first time I read it, I had to go into this library where I handed over my ID mm -hmm. and then got like the one printed copy of the script and read it yeah. in a room by myself. You know, um, and so it's, that was really surreal. Um, even though it had been explained to me, it is, it is a surreal feeling when you read it on the page for the first time. Um, I, when I first saw my death, I, it was during ADR, which is where you do sort of uh, voice replacement. Um, and it was just, I couldn't believe how good it was. Because um, as I say, it was filmed over so many locations and days, and it's hard to put it together in your head, and then you, all of a sudden you see it. And it was, it was very sad. I, I just thought it was immensely emotional. It took my mother, um, it took her about six months after the show went out to watch it. <laughs> she couldn't do oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, it was very sad. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. I'm going to be the cheater and ask a question. I'm a cheater. Um, we oh. do have a couple minutes. Um, as actors, are you allergic to watching yourself on screen or on stage? Like, no, that's why I'm an actor. I love it. I can't. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm so critical of my performance. Like, I feel like if I watch myself on screen or on stage, I'll be like, I should have done that better. What, yeah, how well, do you feel as, as I was new to acting, um, f at first I couldn't do it. I, I, really, mm -hmm. I really hated it. But then I realized that the more I watch myself, the more I sort of learn about my own performance. And mm -hmm. you can sort of fine tune what you're doing. So it's a valuable tool. I wouldn't say I love it, sure. but you just get over it. You have to get yeah, I think you it's have really to important. Separate, separate it. I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't watch things while they're like, in, while I'm in production. I can't like watch, okay. you know, like I yeah, can't watch, horrible. like yeah. as we're shooting, I can't mm. watch things back. Like I have to have finished that character and yeah. removed myself from it a little bit because it's really difficult to understand it if I'm in it. Um, but yeah, I think it, you know, I think it's important to, yeah, to watch your yeah, performance, to, watch your performance yeah. to understand what other people are seeing because our version mm. of how we look is always a little different. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, there we go. Thanks so much, that guys. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Christian Nan and Keisha Castle Hughes. Thank you so much. Thank you.